Architecturally Exposed Structural Steel, Design with Detail, Part 1. What is AESS? This presentation is brought to you by the Association of Collegiate Schools of Architecture. My name is Terry Meyer Boak. I teach architecture at the University of Waterloo, and my passion is steel. What exactly is architecturally exposed structural steel? The law courts designed by Arthur Erickson represent what we have come to expect of AESS. Architecturally exposed structural steel is steel that has been purposefully left exposed, but it must first fulfill structural functions. It is normally a critical part of the architectural aesthetic of the space. It usually requires detailing, finish, and handling that demands more attention and care than regular structural steel. It adds to the cost of the contract. The concepts in detailing in AESS have at their roots much of the energy that came out of high-tech architecture during the 1970s and early 1980s. The early works of Foster, Rogers, and Piano set in motion an approach to detailing that is carried through in contemporary AESS. Where high-tech was practiced by very few firms, it evolved into more pervasive applications of architecturally exposed structural steel. Chicago O'Hare International Airport is said to be the first use of what we now know as AESS in the United States. When designing AESS, one important question that must be asked is, how good is good enough? AESS was initially only being used on very high-profile projects that had exceptionally high budgets. AESS is now also being specified for mid- to lower-end projects. However, not all projects had or have the budget to pay for the sort of detailing of a Calatrava. The reality is that not all AESS ends up being specified for high-end projects and their associated budgets. The question needs to be asked for every project, what detailing is appropriate to the use, the nature of the exposure, and the budget? Exposed steel is used on stadiums and housing as well, and these projects have budgets that are typically more constrained than those for galleries, museums, and airports. The detail of the Sydney Housing Balcony support system is making more use of channels and tubes with a reduced use of expensive custom fabricated work. The steel detailing for the Ottawa airport is a bit fussier, with more crisp lines and custom plate work, including some curved plate at the crotch of the detail. There are subtle differences between applications of AESS that might appear on the surface to be quite the same. This is a function of the use of standard off-the-shelf components, like HSS tubes, wide flange sections, angles, and channels, versus elements that are so precise as to require custom fabrication from steel plate. The shard elements are all fabricated from custom plate, and the Torre Diagonale uses rectangular HSS sections. The bottom line is that all AESS does not need to be equally crafted. Not to say that it should not be properly crafted, but not all situations or projects either need or can afford the same level of fabrication detailing. Problems have been identified in specifying the design of AESS using current standards. AESS is not covered in the miscellaneous metal spec, as this does not address the structural requirements of the steel, only its appearance. AESS can be priced out of sight on projects if excessive fabrication requirements are added out of ignorance, assuming that all projects warrant high-end fabrication and detailing. If Mies once said, God is in the details, then what are these iron workers doing? It would seem they are grinding the surfaces around welded connections. For a structure that will be visible up close, but for passengers who are just standing by, waiting for an airport pickup, the location of the welds is far overhead and really out of view. If we look at the completed structure, we can perhaps become a bit more critical of ways that we can better design the connections of exposed steel structures if we contemplate 
viewing characteristics. What it comes to is that not all ASS needs to be created equal, and that we can choose appropriate approaches that are based on Number one, the use of the building. Some buildings do not warrant expensive detailing, and some do. Number two, the distance to view of the connections. If you cannot see it up close, you can detail less expensively. Number three, the ultimate finish requirements. This is about fire protection, glossy paint, and corrosion protection, as the finishing of the steel can mask some of the details or make them more obvious. Exquisite or expensive detailing needs to be close enough to view to be warranted, or its impact will be lost on the occupants of the building. Even within the range of these four projects, all which have high-level custom work that includes significant weld remediation, grinding and filling, there is indeed a range. The premise in deciding on your detailing strategy, then, is that elements that are close to view range warrant higher-end details than connections that are located at a distance. Generally, the measurement of 6 meters or 20 feet has been decided upon to represent near versus far. It has to be appreciated that many of our buildings, like this atrium space, have spaces that are viewed from many angles, so this needs to be translated to acknowledge multiple viewing positions when detailing the steel. Even architects such as Santiago Calatrava recognize the relationship between distance to view and detailing. Where the steel at the lower levels of Brookfield Place has been fabricated using all custom welding and appears quite seamless, when we look to the higher levels, we can see the use of bolts to connect many of the members. These connections are well beyond the public view. The view to the ceiling of the Galleria also highlights that you need to consider night lighting conditions, as the white steel and its detailing shows up more distinctly against the blackness of the night sky than it does during the daytime hours. This view of the diagrid support system for the new waiting area at King's Cross Station in London, England, also highlights the importance to recognize the night view. The geometry, patterning, and slight variation in the connection design and structural shapes is much more apparent at night than it is during the day. This is a very successful use of AESS in a public space and one that impacts thousands of travelers each day. The connection details for the tubular diagrid at King's Cross have been differentiated based on those located distant to view and those located close up. Welding is used in both instances, but the precision for the distant connections is less precise, which helps the economy of the structure without compromising appearance. I've only touched upon some of the basic ideas behind the exposure of steel and design. For more information and lots of case study examples and photos to inspire your work, feel free to connect with me on my AESS Facebook page. And for more detailed information on designing with architecturally exposed structural steel, check out this book on the topic. It is filled with plenty of photos like the ones included in this presentation and more valuable tips on fabrication, erection, design, and detailing.